Hello guys, uh, welcome to this course on SQL Mastery. Um, in this course, uh, the focus is actually going to be on uh, uh, MySQL, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, but uh, with this course, you will also be very proficient and confident in handling tasks in uh, other databases such as uh, Microsoft SQL Server and also Oracle. So let's begin. Uh, before we uh, actually start the course itself, uh, I'd also like to highlight some of the uh, key goals or objectives of this uh, this particular course. So let's see, what are our goals and objectives here? Okay, so let's start, uh, you know, listing our goals. The first goal that I would like to uh, achieve or objective that I want to achieve with this course is that I want to make sure that we all understand what is data model and how do we uh, design a data model. A data model is something that is um, very important in design databases. Uh, you really need to understand your business model, the different entities that are involved in it, their relationships, uh, etc. So that's one of the uh, earlier goals of our uh, course. The second or uh, the next goal that we want to be, uh, we want to achieve is uh, be able to create a database. So database is basically uh, a storage of information or storage of data. So with MySQL uh, as our focus and as our uh, uh, hands-on tool, we are going to understand how to create a database. The next goal uh, would be to also understand how to create user accounts you know, for our database. So these are all the different people that will actually access uh, the data and uh, query the database. Uh, and then also these users, you know, uh, these users will have different privileges or different uh, you know, uh, permissions uh, on different objects. The next goal would be to create tables. So when I say tables, I um, just use the tables uh, here, but we are also going to be able to create views, which actually sit on tables and uh, views uh, can combine data from multiple tables. So that's uh, also uh, what we're going to understand and learn how to do. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, when once you create your tables, um, you know, they're pretty much empty, right? So we need to start populating those tables, populating those tables with our business data, right? So we will be able to do that also in this uh, this particular course. We are going to create those tables and also populate them. Uh, then uh, once we populate the tables, we have pretty much, uh, you know, half the work is done, I would say. Uh, the reason I say half the work is done is that uh, you have all the business data. You have created your database or designed your database and you have stored the information also. Now the question is, why did we do all this thing, all these things, right? Why did we take all the trouble of, you know, designing a database and, and you know, loading uh, with data and all? It's simply because we want to answer some uh, you know, questions. The questions would be business related and to help our uh, businesses uh, take better decisions. So initially, we are going to answer some uh, simple questions, uh, simple questions such as what are the different products that we are selling, right? What is the total sales, um, let's say for the year of 19, oh sorry, 2019, um, you know, things like that. Fairly simple and straightforward questions, uh, which actually are, uh, are some of the basic things that, you know, basic things that, you know, almost every analyst, you know, every data analyst in this world should, should know. So the next thing, uh, after answering simple questions, we are going to move on to answering complex questions. So when I say complex questions, what do I mean by that? Complex questions can be um, as complex, you know, uh, complex questions can be as easy as show me the total sales for each product category, right, by different region. So, which means that, you know, for each region, I want to show the total sales for each product category. So, I need to be group, uh, I need to be grouping uh, the total sales uh, by different uh, parameters that I pass. So, that's one of the uh, simpler uh, you know complex questions if I may put it that way right now there are more difficult questions which are really really difficult uh, in the sense that it is not only difficult to write the query or the SQL or the syntax for that it's also difficult to process that you know um, these, these are called correlated queries where for every uh, record that you get from one table you need to run a separate SQL on on fly you know to get certain other related information so, so we'll, we'll come to that, these uh, correlated queries and other, uh, other things that we're going to, um, we, we, I just mentioned, right? So answering uh, more complex questions, um, the, and, and one, of, one of the important things to remember is that, you know, these complex questions are important 
when we start talking about analytics, right? It's not just about, you know, show me a list of products and you know, show me the sales, etc. You need to be analyzing the data. You need to do a slice and dice thing. You need to compare one with the other. You need to compare current versus previous. You, know, you need to compare, you know, category by category or region by region um, and things like that. You also want to be able to see subtotals at different levels. So a lot of those things will be, you know, covered in, uh, in uh, answering this, uh, in, in answer complex questions uh, section. So next, uh, we also want to implement certain checks and controls. So when I say checks and controls, uh, let's say you have a, you have a database table um, where you're actually uh, you know, um, uh, storing sales information. Now sales itself cannot be negative. So you want to be able to make sure that you know, the system does not accept negative sales. Um, there could be a business rule that you know, your returns cannot be more than your sales you know, for a particular a customer or for a, for a particular order ID or whatever, right? So all those kinds of business logic uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, embedded into the data, data, database itself. And whenever the, uh, whenever the data is modified, either by creation of data or by modification of data, these checks and controls will kick in and then uh, prevent any kind of uh, data corruption. So just, just so you know, these checks and controls are actually done in the form of uh, constraints and uh, triggers. All right, so next, uh, oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention in, in terms of uh, checks and controls uh, is also about permissions, uh, which will come to uh, in, in a few more moments. So, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, reusable code. When I say reusable code, uh, let's say you, you actually want to run a certain query to process certain information and display an output, and you do that on a daily basis. So if you want to do it on a daily basis, why would you want to write it again and again, right? Or why would you want to, let's say you want to save that uh, syntax or code uh, in a notepad or a text pad and copy paste and run it every day. That's also not good, right? So MySQL and any other uh, database system, a uh, modern database system, provides um, uh, 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 you to create stored routines. When I say stored routines, these are stored reusable programs such as uh, functions and uh, uh, stored procedures. Uh, once these are defined and created and saved in the database itself, you can invoke them uh, as many number of times as you want. So that's the reusable, reusable code that I'm talking about. Uh, the next thing is uh, managed permissions. So managed permissions is also a part of your uh, checks and controls, right? The only reason I kind of split them up into two different things is that managed permissions is, uh, managed permissions is something that is more of an administration activity as uh, done by an administrator, whereas checks and controls with respect to business data is something that even uh, uh, SQL developer can also do, you know, by creating triggers and functions and procedures and also while uh, designing the database itself in terms of uh, constraints. Uh, so coming to this managed permissions, uh, let's say uh, you want to, um, you want to have certain users uh, access uh, a database uh, table in a read-only mode always. You don't want certain users to be you know, able to delete certain things or modify certain things and things like that. So all those um, things are actually handled by uh, uh, permissions um, in uh, any database system. And the next thing uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll target is designing a date time, a date and time uh, um, you know, a table or an entity uh, end to end. When I say end to end, what I really mean is that in this exercise, we're going to go through the entire uh, life cycle of designing the table, you know, right from logical to physical design to populating the data, okay, and even modifying the, the table and uh, querying that uh, table and everything. So, this is going to be a very interesting exercise for us. Uh, the reason is uh, date and time is pretty much standard across the industry because everybody has the same calendar right and of course you can have different kinds of calendars uh, different uh, uh, fiscal years uh, you know uh, but uh, the essence of date and time is pretty much the same across the world it's just that you know, you're in different time zones etc etc but but uh, you'll have the same number of days you know same number of hours in a day etc etc so yeah so this is going to be a very interesting exercise for us and in this exercise i'm also going to use Excel to show you how uh, to visualize the data and then how to reproduce or uh, you know how to uh, create the data in uh, MySQL. So so then then what else? Okay, then we're going to do some more um, you know uh, in this tutorial. Uh, we're going to answer some more complex questions 
uh, I've just listed down uh, some questions here, you know, as you can see, and uh, some of them may not really be very complex um, for you or even for, you know, anyone else also. But that doesn't matter. These are just indicative questions. We're going to actually, we're going to come to the real questions when we come to that section. So, that, so that's uh, it, you know, when we do all these things, right, when you, when you, when you know how to create a, a data model, you know, design database, you know, create your users, create objects such as tables, views, etc., reusable code, checks and controls, populating the tables, answering uh, simple questions and complex questions, etc., etc. So you're actually going to become, um, uh, you know, uh, an SQL master. And that's our real goal here. So once you, uh, you get familiar with all those things and once you get confident uh, with all the hands-on exercises, um, this is uh, what uh, our ultimate goal is, to become an SQL master. And when I say SQL master, uh, you don't, uh, you're not restricted to MySQL itself, which is our, our tool uh, for this tutorial. You will also be able to, uh, you know, uh, show proficiency in other database uh, uh, tools uh, because the, the gist and the concepts are pretty much same across of course there are differences in the syntax and in some of the features that are supported by different vendors but all those things will become pretty easy for you uh, once you uh, you know uh, complete this course so uh, so that's it you know okay guys uh, so let's start understanding why we need SQL right so one of the first reasons that I've highlighted here is creating a database. So let's say uh, you have just purchased uh, a database tool, right? Like uh, MS Access or you downloaded the free MySQL database. Now, if you want to create your own database and start storing information in it, the first thing you need to do is you need to create uh, your, uh, you know, your uh, database. So that's what you will do. And you will need to write an SQL statement for that. So create database and database name, right? So that's the first reason. Now the second uh, reason or the second use case uh, is you want to be able to define, you know, uh, define your data uh, that's going to be stored in the database. When I say define, uh, DDL actually stands for data definition language. Um, what I, uh, what, what is meant by defining your data is that you need to define the name, uh, names of the different, different structures uh, that are going to be stored. Uh, what is the uh, structure format? Uh, what are the attributes of the object? What are the data types? Uh, for example, let's take uh, product as an example. So I want to store product information, right? I want to create a table called product, uh, product, and it should have, uh, let's say, four columns, right? Product ID, product name, product description, and a create date, create date uh, uh, column, right? So these are the definitions that you have to, uh, you know, write, write down in uh, in, a, in in the SQL specific format, um, and then uh, feed it into your database. So that's another reason you need DDL. So DDL also includes uh, creating your functions, um, you know, your um, users and uh, a lot of other things, which we are going to explore explore in this uh, in this particular uh, course. Okay. So what's the next um, uh, you know, next use case? So the next use case is actually uh, modifying. Uh, so when you want to modify, so let's say you want to modify your uh, uh, data, right? Uh, modification also includes Although it's not so obvious, it also includes creating data so, or inserting data, right? So you start inserting your product information, you know, you are selling uh, car, automobiles, you know, paper, uh, electronics, uh, you know, apparel, whatever, right? All those product information you are actually entering into the system, uh, which is a part of your uh, DML. And then you can also update it, right? So you can also change the definitions, you can change the values or you can also delete those uh, records. So all those things come under uh, you know, DML or modification uh, process. So DML stands for data modification language. Now the next um, use case is querying it, right? Obviously, if you don't, um, you know, like query it, if you don't ask questions to your database system, you're not going to get an answer. And if you're, if you never intended to query the database, there's no point in uh, storing it and unless it's an archive uh, which is just kept for you know um, just in case or uh, you know contingency kind of uh, thing right so an active database is always queried right so here uh, dql means uh, data query language so you ask questions to your database uh, give me a list of our products give me all the total sales uh, for this year or give me all the sales uh, uh, where a certain uh, 
product was not sold you know or sold uh, the max things like that simple questions and complex questions so all those things uh, can be done in uh, sql now the control um, um, uh, dcl as i mentioning here dcl means data control language uh, this is used to manage permissions so let's say i want i have a certain table or a view uh, or basically any object in the database that i have created and i want to restrict access to it to certain number of users and i want to enable access to certain number of users uh, so all this is done using uh, dcl or uh, control dcl so you basically say grant read on a particular object name to a particular user name so that's pretty much what the syntax looks like across different uh, you know database tools we are going to explore some of those also in my sql later in this course um, the next use case is triggers now triggers um, are basically uh, programs that are um, uh, tied to a table or uh, a database table and to an event um, uh, you know and basically triggered by an event so they can be triggered before the event or the after the event uh, i think uh, we also touched upon these triggers uh, in one of our earlier uh, lectures so for example let's say you are inserting email ids into a table right into a table column so and i create a trigger that validates your uh, email id so because we don't want uh, any junk uh, garbage values in that field right so what this trigger might do is uh, before insert or before update you validate the input value right and check if it um, conforms to a specific email id format for example x at y.com right and there's a whole uh, string pattern recognition thing that we need to do to ensure that you know uh, uh, to, to confirm or affirm that it's a valid email id is as, as a use case as an example i'm just uh, talking about email ids but you could also it's uh, enforce business rules uh, uh, with this um, and a lot of other things so that's what uh, you know um, triggers are and you can write uh, triggers using um, sql basically you write triggers using sql or uh, sql syntax okay so now here we have transactions right so transactions uh, by transactions um, uh, what, what it actually means it's not about you know the money transactions that we normally do right like give and take right that's not what this is about so here uh, the let's say you have five different steps so you want to create a product you want to create a sale and you also want to uh, update the inventory so for example if five items are sold then those five items must be removed from the inventory table so as an example right now what if you update your sales table and uh, add three uh, three sales uh, sales or sales of uh, three products but your uh, uh, update to the inventory where you need to delete the inventory by uh, three uh, right that fails so then your data becomes inconsistent your data becomes inconsistent so it's like if you're balancing uh, the debits and credits if you increase the credit and you must have you know uh, change the debit also if that doesn't happen then your whole uh, equation uh, goes for a toss right so that's what uh, this uh, transaction control is all about so you you in, in this what you do is you specify uh, different steps let's say there are one two three and four steps right so in transactions uh, control what we uh, what we can do or uh, is that we can instruct the database to complete this entire set of instructions either fully or you know absolutely none so it cannot be uh, you know partially done you know it cannot be partially done it should be done in full or in none so that's what uh, is your you know, transactions so the other thing is that you know let's say you updated certain data right now you uh, made a mistake and you want to roll it back you want to undo it so roll back and commit commit is when uh, uh, you make a change and you want to persist uh, you know those changes so you do a commit so all these things come under transactions and those are also uh, you know uh, uh, done using the uh, sql statements or sql contracts right so now um, i think i just do something here see here uh, what i'm mentioning here is uh, actually administration it's not clear because i just use that space to um, demonstrate the transaction thing so administration so when you talk about administration you talk about user account management password reset you know table space management a lot of other things that you know uh, the dba does all of that is also done using sql syntax so that's it uh, and then um, the other thing that uh, we should remember is that you know it's very important that sql 
is not case sensitive. So your SQL commands or SQL syntax or SQL code is not case sensitive. It doesn't really matter if you write it in uppercase or lowercase or mix them. So they are going to be effective as they are. So let's just remember that, right? So this is about um, your uh, use cases of SQL and why we need um, SQL. So I hope you understood uh, the purpose of having SQL. It can do so many different things that, you know, in the beginning, uh, it might look a little bit, uh, if not intimidating, um, you know, definitely confusing because you have uh, something like, you know, DML, DDL, DQL, DCL, and you have triggers and this and that and all. But as and when you start getting your uh, feet wet uh, uh, with hands-on exercises, uh, you will be able to appreciate these concepts uh, better. All right. So, thank you. Hello, friends. Welcome back. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, tutorial or in this lecture, we're going to explore what are the various different types of uh, SQLs. You know, it's uh, basically understanding the SQL concepts. Uh, and if you remember, we talked about why do we need SQL at all uh, in some of our uh, in one of our earlier videos. And we talked about how to define our data, how to modify data, how to control access to our data, etc. So here we are going to take uh, uh, one step. We are going to take it one step further and understand what are the various options or various features available. Uh, but the execution part of it or the implementation part of it is something that we are going to reserve for uh, upcoming videos. I am sorry, and reserve for next videos. So let's start. Uh, what are these SQL concepts that we should be aware of? In fact, uh, before we start, uh, let's also understand that this forms the, the core or the gist of this entire tutorial. If we understand these concepts well and then we uh, implement them properly in the uh, following videos and lectures and working sessions and all, then we should be good. All right, so let's start. Uh, so one of the first things that we talked about uh, uh, was uh, DDL or Data Definition Language. Uh, so what this helps us is uh, with is how do we define our data, right? So DDL helps us define our data. So before we actually start using data, we need to define it. So what is sales? What is the product? Uh, what is the customer, right? So we have to come up with the structure. We have to come up with, uh, you know, the different attributes or fields or columns. What are the data types also involved in it? And all those things are uh, you know, handled in uh, DDL. So how is it done? So take a look at this um, uh, screen. Uh, in order to define your data, you have multiple, uh, you know, SQL uh, concepts or statements that are available uh, with MySQL and also with other uh, database vendors. I keep repeating that because SQL has become so standard uh, that, you know, if you learn one uh, you know, tool, you're pretty much good with the other tools also almost uh, uh, by 80 or 70 percent. Okay. So you have create, uh, you know, you have create clause. Uh, this helps us create a table, uh, create a view. Uh, create a uh, uh, stored routine such as a function or a trigger or anything else right then you also have an alter option uh, so once you create your objects you may want to make certain changes to it or uh, make some additions to it so for example if you have a product from a, you know, a product table which has just two columns and if you want to add a third column then you come back and alter it or if you want if you have a product column and you want to make product name unique which was not done before again come back and alter it so alter is like modifying your definition. Now renaming. So renaming is a pretty straightforward, fairly straightforward uh, uh, syntax or you know usage of it. Uh, you just rename the object, uh, you know, uh, to something else. Now let's say you have created certain tables and uh, your entire business requirements has changed, or you just uh, uh, made so many mistakes, you know, so many so many things have changed that now uh, the objects are no longer us usable. So what you do is uh, you drop those objects. So there's a uh, 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 similar command for data modification let's say you want to delete a particular row in a table then you do a delete however if you want to drop the object itself which contains that uh, data for example a table uh, or if you want to drop a view or a function or whatever you use drop now take a look at this uh, truncate now truncate is a very special uh, kind of uh, uh, you know data definition language uh, syntax uh, what it actually does is that it removes all the data from your table okay so let's say you have a table which has like uh, 5 million rows and you need to scrap that uh, data right if you go through the standard way of deleting every row one by one it's going to take a lot of time and also a lot of resources 
okay uh, because uh, it will hold up uh, your resources and your other queries will suffer because of that so to overcome that or uh, the you know that situation uh, the database uh, system gives you this command called as uh, truncate so when you do a truncate uh, it deletes all the data in the table okay and it also uh, commits it automatically which means that once you truncate it you cannot uh, uh, you know undo it so you have to be very careful when you use uh, a truncate statement now the last one in ddl uh, is your comment clause so what this comment clause does is actually uh, it's uh, like adding metadata to your data definitions so you have uh, let's say a product table which has a product id uh, for a description and things like that and you want to add certain comments to it uh, which is not your business data right so what does product id hold it's uh, you can add a comment uh, that you know it is um, a unique identifier for each product okay and product description so this is a detailed description of the product and it can be up to 100 characters long something like that so these kind of commenting features are available so this is pretty much what you will be working with uh, as far as ddl is concerned uh, most of your time okay so let's move on now the next one is uh, dml so what is a dml right if you take a look at this uh, dml uh, thing here it's uh, 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 as uh, as we have uh, discussed earlier also it's called data modification language okay and how it helps us is that it helps us to create data okay it helps us to modify what we created it also helps us to delete or basically you know clean up our data so we by cleaning uh, for cleaning up we just talked about truncate you know up here right up here right that is um, yeah, that is something uh, that comes under the data definition language uh, because it has a different implementation and it is uh, automatically uh, auto commit uh, transaction uh, where you cannot undo it and it doesn't do it doesn't follow the standard steps that a delete statement would follow so delete is uh, strictly a data modification uh, language and it uh, goes through all those you know uh, uh, internal uh, steps that it has to to delete the data from the table okay so now let's see what is uh, what are various uh, constructs or clauses uh, for data modification so take a look at this on the screen uh, you have so many right take a look at this okay so you have insert to insert a row into a table okay you have update to update the existing data uh, you can update the entire uh, table or you can update uh, only a select few rows but for that you have to uh, add a where clause so update product you know set product description is equal to something where product id is equal to let's say uh, one or two right so th that's how you can limit your operations now again delete De delete also has the same kind of effect uh, you can delete all the rows in the table which is extremely dangerous and no one should ever do it okay um, if you really want to delete all the table in the all the records in the table better go for truncate uh, you know because uh, one is it is uh, super efficient and second is that you know that you know you're taking a dangerous uh, you know um, action and you'll be uh, careful with the truncate with delete uh, you can delete one or two rows also or you can delete the entire uh, uh, you know table by mistake if you do not specify uh, a filter condition okay so now let's next is merge or absurd so take a look at this okay what is absurd absurd is basically your update and your insert so when you issue this kind of a statement with certain data what the database does is if it already has the record it will do an update on it if it doesn't have that record then it does an insert so so let's say you have a product id one and you say product right product okay so when you do that um, if you have this kind of thing um, and second is uh, let's say you have another product okay uh, which is uh, let's say uh, I don't know like what uh, fruits something like that okay so when you do uh, an absurd when you issue that command called absurd uh, then um, it will check you know and if you specify let's say if you specify this row okay uh, absurd with these values it will see that you know the id the one id is uh, id one for product is already there so it will do one update okay or it will do one update here or if you if you pass variables as you know let's say three and um, let's say water right then it will because it's not there in the uh, assuming that it is not there in the table it will do an insert okay 
so that's your upsort now you have uh, similarly we have other uh, commands here we have do import table replace table values with CTE etc I will go through some of this uh, in this uh, uh, video and uh, in the com coming videos we want to see a demonstration and actual hands-on um, uh, session on each of these uh, command tables uh, each of these uh, commands okay so let's take a look at this what is CTE right CTE basically means common table expression so when do we need this uh, CTE so let's say you're writing a query and it's a very complex query and uh, in order to run that query you need some extra information or you need to bring in more uh, you know uh, data and then query on that so what you can do is you can use this with CTE and it actually creates a temporary table with that particular data and then queries on that okay so that is your CTE so when we come to the implementation you'll you'll uh, you'll be able to easily follow it so let's take a look at this now um, you have values right so what is values so values is a statement that is used to pass input values to the date table rows okay so let's say I say insert into product values and then I give all the list of values that I want to pass and you know insert into the, the table say one comma um, fruits uh, 2 comma you know household 3 comma automobiles 4 comma stationary where is 1 2 3 and 4 are all your IDs so something like that okay so that's your values now explain plan explain plan is a very important concept if you want to become an SQL master or you know if you want to be uh, more than uh, the regular SQL developer explain plan actually uh, tells you how your SQL is going to be uh, you know executed the reason we need to understand explain plan is that if you have a complex query running against a very large table then you need to understand what kind of indexes are actually being used in the query and what is the query path okay it actually helps us optimize the query for performance so let's say your query is taking like um, 15 minutes to run right uh, for uh, for many uh, in many cases which is okay this, this is not a bad idea this is not a bad thing actually but however in many cases 15 minutes is not allowed where the user is expecting results in let's say few seconds or at most in a couple of more minutes right so when you do an explain plan it will tell about it will talk about how the table is being used if there are any indexes and if they are being used or not and things like that so just remember that um, explain plan is used for performance uh, uh, analysis and performance uh, improvement so then you'll be uh, you'll be able to you know use it further uh, okay now let's say let's come to this statement called use so let's say you are in a database called CS database okay and you want to query or you want to switch uh, to a different database okay so there's uh, inventory database and CS database so within uh, CS database if you want to switch you say in uh, you, you switch to uh, inventory by using use space inventory database okay so that's how you can switch um, similarly there are others you know there's uh, replace replace what replace actually does is you know when you're creating a different ob a new object uh, normally what we do is create or replace okay this is what is normally done uh, so if an object by that name already exists it will uh, replace it and a new uh, uh, and a new object is created so that's about all these uh, data modification languages uh, sorry data modification language uh, constructs um, I hope you uh, didn't get uh, overwhelmed by this but uh, the names uh, that you see on uh, you know in this table are pretty self-explanatory you know they are not intimidating at all you have insert update delete very common absurd is basically absurd or insert uh, or insert then you have do import table uh, replace is pretty straightforward now do and import table will come to come to this you know in the future videos uh, then we have uh, with common uh, table expression that is your CTE right Common table, common table expression, um, and a couple of more. So, uh, not not very intimidating and not very confusing. Also, uh, so we'll come to the practical sessions uh, in, uh, very soon, and then uh, you'll be able to uh, appreciate this uh, further. So let's move on now. So what is uh, this DCL? So DCL is uh, as we have uh, discussed in our previous video. It's basically your data control language. How can you control access to your data? How can you avoid unwanted people from accessing your data and how can you enable um, you know uh, eligible people to access the data right so there are two concepts uh, one is called grant the other one is called revoke 
grant is basically your granting permissions and revoke is your taking away the permissions so this is this is the syntax for that uh, I'm, I'm not sorry sorry not the syntax but the construct we're going to look at the syntax when we actually start you know, working uh, sessions so now the next thing is data query language or dql so we did all this stuff you know we designed our tables so we designed our data we modified we granted permissions but if we don't use it what's the point of you know doing all the stuff right so dql is where the, what helps us fetch data from the database uh, and the most common on the universal uh, construct is your select construct okay so you do a select uh, whatever information you want from whatever objects you want and you know with the specific conditions right so after this video we'll look at some of the uh, common SQL statements um, and then you'll be able to understand uh, how, how it is used but uh, just remember that you know select uh, is not 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 a very uh, limited or a simple construct it can have a lot of different variations in it you know and a lot of uh, complications and a lot of complex queries can also be written uh, we are going to go through uh, go through them in the uh, next uh, few videos okay so now coming to transactions okay so transaction is also another um, uh, sql uh, statement uh, or sql concept uh, as i said in the previous video uh, if you want to make sure that your uh, uh, data updates are consistent and in uh, you know and without breaking any data integrity you have to be able to uh, manage transactions so let's say a transaction is complete only if five steps are completely done or it is absolutely incomplete if any one of them is also not done right so either you want to so let's say you have a block of code here okay you have a block of code here here you're deleting some data okay let's say you're deleting some data then you're inserting some data then you're up to updating some data then again you're you know inserting some data right okay and then you are updating some data so you want to be sure you want to make sure that you know this entire uh, code is done in complete or none at all so that's where you use your transactions or you also want to uh, check you know <coughs> that uh, i just deleted my uh, uh, record by mistake and i want to undo it okay so that's where your transaction statements come into picture so what are they take a look at this okay so you have start transaction you have uh, commit uh, i'm sorry this is actually commit okay then you have rollback and then you have save point you also have rollback release lock and set transaction so rollback and commit are the most uh, commonly used uh, transaction statements uh, because uh, a lot of the times you know you are uh, uh, making some changes and you want to commit them to the database until you do a commit unless the auto commit is enabled uh, unless you commit uh, the changes are not persisted so if let's say you update certain data you have to do a commit to make sure that it is you know it is saved permanently in the database or you do something wrong and you want to do or you want to undo it so the way to undo it is you do a rollback so that's why as a best practice auto commit you know uh, i'm sorry auto commit should uh, uh, actually be uh, disabled is that according to me you know because uh, it might lead to a lot of you know unwanted results okay so that's your transaction and we are going to uh, go through them uh, you know with hands-on also all right so what else do we have right what else can i use to help me with my job so that's the question uh, there are a lot of others uh, you know other syntax uh, other sql constructs a lot of other commands that are available um, in uh, mysql uh, just for uh, this particular tutorial and this discussion I'm going to show you the the three uh, different the three other categories uh, of statements that we can use. Uh, the first one I'm uh, mentioning here is called utility statements. So utility statements are basically you know you describe and explain. Explain is already something that we've got covered here, and describe and explain are actually um, your uh, synonyms. So in fact, all the three here that you see here, explain, plan, use, and help, they are all actually your utility i'm sorry i'll just remove this again because uh, the diagram was not correct okay all right okay so this is basically your okay so this is basically your uh, uh, you know utility statements all these three right okay so this uh, explain plan use and uh, describe and help now the other one that i want to mention here is called prepared statements so a prepared statement is like a pre-compiled 
uh, SQL statement okay so you prepare uh, let's say you write a complex SQL uh, and that SQL or that statement can also take uh, parameters as inputs so for example let's say uh, show me the sales for all the products sold after a certain date now that date can be parameterized which means uh, a user can uh, enter the uh, you know date value and the statement will take it as an input prepare the query and then you know send you back the data so these prepared statements are actually uh, stored on the server uh, and reusable and they can also take parameters so uh, so that's also a very useful uh, feature uh, because you don't want to you know uh, prepare or write your sqls again and again that's one thing and you also don't want the server to parse these statements again and again um, and you know consume resources so you write once and use it many times but uh, just uh, remember that you know prepared statements are, are alive as for as long as your uh, session is alive okay let me just write that here clearly okay because uh, okay as long as your session is alive okay all right now the last one uh, in this discussion is your compound statements the compound statement as the name itself suggests uh, contains multiple statements uh, each statement is com complete in itself uh, and then uh, terminated by a semicolon but you want a whole bunch of code uh, you know uh, to to be executed right now compound statements can also be nested so you can have one large compound statement within that you can have multiple different compound statements okay like a group of statements and in each compound statement you can also declare your local variables so think of this you know a compound statement is basically like a small uh, program snippet which uh, contains multiple uh, you know uh, statements or multiple multiple commands or whatever right and it has also has its own local variables so that's it uh, you will come to see that you know compound statements are heavily used in stored routines where you want to create reusable code right so in uh, one of my earlier discussion you know in this course i had also talked about reusable code so compound statements and even the pre uh, prepared statements both of them can be used as reusable code uh, in many occasions okay so this uh, was all about sql concepts just to recap you know you have um, you have your ddl that is basically your data definition language to create and define and alter and basically manage your data definitions then you have data modification language which is basically to manage your actual business data okay then you have data control language which is basically to manage your uh, permissions okay or control who can access who cannot access okay then you also have data query language which is nothing but your select um, you know uh, clause uh, and uh, read their database and produce output for the business then you also have transactions okay now, transactions is basically to ensure that your data is uh, i know uh, modified or updated or deleted or whatever consistently according with your according to your business rules so you cannot have half um, half baked or uh, uh, half done activities and leave your uh, system in a status of uh, confusion right so for example if i'm removing if i'm withdrawing uh, money from my account then both my account uh, uh, you know uh, details need to be updated and your uh, ledger or whichever your, your master book right that also has to be updated uh, according to, accordingly so if i just delete my uh, if i remove the uh, you know if, if i basically reduce the account balance on my account but your total balance in your ledger or whichever right your big book is not adjusted then there's a state of uh, imbalance or uh, uh, yeah imbalance actually yeah so that's for transactions and then the last one we talked about is what else and we have utility statements we have prepared statements and we have compound statements the last two prepared and compound are for reuse of code all right okay so when we come to the practical exercises you'll uh, uh, you know uh, uh, appreciate this better and i hope that with this tutorial combined with the uh, with this course and with the last course on why we need sql you would have gained a better understanding with little more uh, you know uh, details on sql concepts thank you for watching Hey everyone, um, uh, this uh, lecture I wanted to uh, cover some of the basic things or basic concepts of 
uh, you know, getting uh, data from different databases. Uh, the reason for having this introduction uh, to a select introduction to select is that most of us uh, in the beginning do a lot of uh, you know database uh, queries. We actually try to get uh, read data from the database from uh, single table, single view, multiple tables. We want to you know answer a lot of business questions uh, such as uh, what's the sales, uh, what's the sales by uh, you know different products and things like that. So I just want to make sure that you know, everybody and anybody and everybody who's taking this course uh, gets gets to see what kind of questions can be answered. And these are all basic questions, actually business questions, uh, so that it gives uh, gives us an idea of what to expect uh, going forward. And uh, in the future, we want to have some advanced uh, con adv advanced concepts also and complex joins, complex uh, queries, and all. But uh, this particular discussion or this particular session is just to uh, pick that interest you know just to make sure that you you get a just you get an idea of what is coming up and how you can benefit and just to show you some uh, value of this course okay so introduction to sql or introduction to select statements so how do you fetch data from uh, databases okay uh, and how do you combine data from multiple tables and multiple sources now this is uh, one of the uh, this is by far the uh, you know biggest question uh, that um, all of us have, uh, especially if you are analysts, or if you are just getting started with databases and all. Uh, so what does it really look like, right? So let's take a look at it. Okay, now let's assume uh, that this is one of our tables called sales table, uh, with uh, which has uh, four columns in it, uh, sales ID, product ID, amount and channel ID. And it has got 12, uh, I think about, yeah, 12 rows. So this is a table that has rows and columns. Uh, now there's another table called product, okay, the product table has two columns one is product id and the other one is called product name so if you take a look at the first table that that also has a column called product id now in the database world this is actually a foreign key so let me just uh, yeah this is called this is actually a foreign key in the sales table f o r e i g n okay this is a foreign key and that references the primary key in product table as the arrow, arrow goes okay here as I just did it so so now what are the different questions that we can uh, ask and uh, we can answer right now I just showed another small data sheet here uh, what I have done is actually I have calculated the total sales for each product ID from the sales table okay so the sales table if I do a uh, you know select of uh, uh, product ID and sum of sales uh, sum of amount um, you know as per the syntax I should be getting this uh, uh, output so now let's start asking questions okay or uh, let's start looking at different simple SQL statements that can be run so the first statement is um, uh, how do I get all rows and all columns from a table basically I want to fetch the entire data set right in the table so I just do a select star from products here products is the table select is a keyword star is a wildcard uh, character from is another keyword and products is the name of the object in our case it is products so I just do a select star from products and it will give me this output as you can see here on the left side so select star from product gives me all the rows and all the columns in the products table so that's how we get all the data now the next um, thing is I want to instead of doing a select of star or basically you know basically selecting all the columns I want to specify what columns I want. So in this query, in the second query, um, as you can see here, this is the first one, and uh, this is the second one. I'm specifying the column names, okay? Sales ID and amount, okay? Sales ID and amount from sales. Now I've just missed typing A here. So with a space, I should be typing A, and uh, it's actually an alias. You could have A, B, C, D. We could just write whatever name you want. And that's basically an, an, an alias for this particular table. So, so the the query says that you know give me these call two columns from sales table. And what are those two those two columns? Those are um, sales ID and amount. And so when I run that, I get this data. So if you take a look at this, the sales table has multiple rows and columns, and I'm only picking up these two uh, columns and all the rows, all the rows. Okay. So that's your second SQL statement. Now let's come to the third SQL statement where I am actually selecting few rows but all columns. Okay, here I am not limiting the number of columns in the third query. I am limiting the number of rows. And how can I do it? I can do it by applying a where condition. So again, select star from products 
give me all the columns from products however the the the, the condition is that product name should be bananas so the sql says or the select statement says select star from products where product name equals bananas product name is the column on which i want to apply the filter on and equal to bananas so bananas is the values that i'm actually searching for right so when i do that it just gives me one row because uh, in the entire product table there's only one row that has uh, bananas in it so that's the row i get so that's how you apply a where condition on a column okay now the next uh, uh, you know select statement uh, take a look at this i'm actually combining data from multiple tables now what i'm doing here is i am uh, combining data from sales and product table so my query um, is select b dot product name comma a dot amount okay now what are these a and b's right as i said a is an alias that i used previously i'm using it again here and b is another alias so every table or every or every view in the select statement can be given an alias name or you don't have to give it if you're just using one table or if you're uh, not using uh, similarly named uh, you know uh, objects so it's better to give because it's a good practice so here i'm giving an alias to sales as a and an alias to uh, product table as b so i'm selecting select b dot product name comma a dot amount uh, from sales a and products b okay i'm combining the data and i'm also applying a where condition the reason i'm applying this where condition is when i'm combining data from multiple tables we need to identify the common columns and give a condition otherwise what happens is it will pick up all the possible combinations from uh, both the tables okay which is wrong right because uh, sales of uh, let's say bananas can't be mixed with sales of uh, apples so if i don't specify this particular condition where a dot product id equals b dot product id uh, it will just uh, do a m into n uh, uh, you know kind of matrix and it will give me the entire set of combinations and that the total number of combinations if you do a simple math there are 12 rows in sales and six rows in uh, products so what are the combinations right 12 into 6 is actually 72 okay so it will give me 72 rows and each of the sales will be repeated for each of the products which is actually wrong right which is very very wrong because sale id 1 is against product id 1 so it should actually be reflected against product uh, id 1 and product names apples only and nothing else that's what this that's what this joint condition does okay so when you do that and of course i'm also doing an order by order by product name order by is basically your sorting uh, by default uh, it is ascending you can also change it to descending so let's see what the output looks like so as you can see here um, each product id uh, is now being replaced by your product name and sales as usual okay and uh, uh, one two three four five six seven eight okay so i've just copied so if, it, if you take a look at this now uh, on this in the sales table there are 12 records and in the product table there are six records okay and uh, when i combine this um, product id equals product id um, i mean i when i combine sales and product table i got fewer rows i got less number of rows than the actual number of rows in sales table and what is the reason the reason is because i have given this joint condition and it find it found certain records in the sales table with product id 7 and 8 which are actually not present in the product table so these these rows that i am marking now in red actually failed the joint conditions and that's why they are excluded so and that's why they are excluded you know they did not show up in the list so just to remember uh, uh, you know uh, you when you combine data from multiple tables you should specify a joint condition all right um, so the next query now okay now again i'm going to select product id and i'm going to do a sum of amount now now if your table has multiple rows um, and you want to aggregate them you want to combine data from multiple rows you actually use what uh, what is called as a uh, called as an aggregating function or aggregate function or summarizing data summarizing function right uh, summary functions so these could be your sum um, min max average right any of the statistical functions on multiple values or sets of data right 
So when I do this, I do a you know, select a dot product ID, comma a dot sum of a dot amount from sales a. Again, a is the alias. Whenever I use an aggregate function, I should also use a group by function. Okay, um, that's how the uh, SQL engine knows that uh, when the aggregation is happening, what are the columns that you want to group by? Okay. And here I'm actually grouping by product ID because I want to combine all the sales for each product ID. So if you take a look at the sales table, product ID 1 has 100, it also has 101. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to combine these two rows into a single row with product ID 1 and total amount as 101 because I'm summing, right? And this is that SQL. So it, uh, you do a sum of amount from sales and then I do a group by the columns, the remaining columns, the non-aggregate columns, okay? So when I do that, this is the output I'm getting, and which is correct also. So for each product, it is doing a sum of its uh, sales and it's displaying uh, by doing a group by. So this is another kind of SQL and very, very common scenario. These are all very common scenarios, okay. Now what's the next one that we can think of uh, or we, we want to look at, right? Now, if you remember, we filtered for bananas in this in the third query here, okay. We did a select star from products and we said where product name is equal to bananas. Now, similarly, when you do an aggregate, uh, you know, query, when you do, when you aggregate data and you want to filter based on certain minimum value or maximum value, right, or equal to, uh, when you do that, when you want to do that, you do not do a where, okay, you do not use a where clause, you actually use a having clause, as I'm highlighting here. So, select a dot product ID, comma, sum of amount from sales having having is the condition is similar to where but it is applicable yeah, only to aggregate functions having sum of amount greater than 500 so this is the filter on aggregate values so this is a complete query so when you do that uh, i'm sorry the, the group i is still uh, still needs to be added okay so with this group i also uh, so because we am, i'm doing an aggregation i'm doing i'm using a group i and because i want to do a filter on the uh, sum value or the aggregate value, I'm using a having clause, okay? So when I do that, this is what I get. So all the sales, uh, all the sum of sales, where uh, the sum of sales is greater than 500 is listed here. And if you take a look at the uh, previous uh, query output, 201 and 41 for product ID 1 and 2 are not listed because their sum of sales or sum of amount uh, is less than 500. And not even equal to 500 actually okay so the last one uh, is uh, let's take a look at this i'm selecting product id i'm selecting the sum of amount from sales and product and i'm also doing a join on uh, the uh, product id column and i'm also specifying a, a where condition okay now this where condition here, the first line is nothing but your join condition, okay? It's not really a where condition, although it is actually, it's not really a filter condition, but that's what it is doing, but it is ideally known as a join condition. And the second line is your filter condition, okay? Where I'm saying product name like Apple, okay? I'm only looking for apples now, but I'm also looking for apples that sold more than 500, okay? I'm looking for uh, you know product IDs uh, with names like Apple now like is is a pattern matching uh, you know uh, construct so when you say like you can give a pattern and uh, the values are matched if they you know match this pattern that you mentioned then the results are included so where product name like percent Apple percent percent is another wild card so basically what I'm saying is the product name contains Apple within it it could be at the beginning it could be at the end of it or it could be in the middle of it anywhere so as long as the name contains apple in it i want the results right so if you take a look at the data set product data set the only product id that really has apples in it is product id one okay product id one but we know that product id one for product id one the total uh, amount is only 201 right only 201 um, now having some amount greater than 500 is another condition that's here now obviously 201 is not greater than 500 so this SQL should give us no results okay this SQL should give us no results and that's what 
it does if you uh, you know when you actually run this query in the um, against the database so this was a very quick and very brief introduction with simple sqls that actually tell us how uh, you know we can get data from the database tables uh, using different uh, different methods okay you can get data from the same uh, table you can combine data from multiple uh, tables you can filter on the row values you can filter on the aggregate values you can specify a pattern uh, to look for when you filter you don't have to give the exact values right you can fetch all the information in the table or you can fetch just part of it you can you know fetch limited number of columns etc now combining data from multiple uh, tables is not as easy as you uh, you know see in this particular example as i told you this was just an introduction we have a separate discussion on joins where we talk about how data is combined from multiple tables and things can actually get very complicated also but nothing to be intimidated you know nothing to be worried about because uh, when you go step by step and um, you understand the concepts uh, it doesn't matter whether you have like five tables to you know combine or you have 15 tables you will be able to do it uh, when you break it down into smaller pieces you know small problems so with that i'd uh, be ending this um, lecture i hope you got some good idea of what sql is what select is and uh, why do we need to learn sql what can we do with that when we have access to a database and uh, we know how to you know fetch data what kind of reports we can run etc etc all right so that's it thank you uh, thanks for uh, watching Hello guys, um, welcome and uh, let's start this course. I'm going to start this course uh, with an introduction uh, to the database uh, the concepts and I'm going to cover this from uh, the perspective of a manager or a layman. Uh, by that uh, what I mean is uh, we will not be specific, we will not talk about any specific you know, syntax or code or any kind of uh, a specific tool but in general let's understand what is the uh, concept concept behind a database and you know how they are designed etc etc so so what is a database and what are the basic features of a, a dbms system uh, dbms stands for database management system so let's check out so if you see on the screen you know i've kind of defined it as a, a database system is a software system that organizes and manages data when I say organize and manage, it uh, captures data, it stores it, it defines it, you know, it also provides us uh, tools uh, to retrieve data and also to, you know, add data, modify data, etc. Especially um, focused on business data. And that is what the end users would do, uh, either uh, uh, automatically uh, in terms of uh, automated scripts or through interaction uh, with the users, uh, uh, as in a user would type in certain questions or queries in the specific format or specified format and it would get the results. So that's pretty much it, you know, a database system. Uh, it actually, it's a software system that holds your data and lets you manage it and also query it. Now, a database system um, uh, as, a, as a terminology, it refers to both the systems as well as the technology adopted uh, to, you know, to uh, fulfill uh, all these uh, uh, business needs. Now, there are multiple different stages of designing a database. Uh, you know, in order to design a database, we have to go step by step through a sequence of different stages or uh, life cycle stages uh, until you reach uh, a mature uh, and reliable uh, you know, output or uh, target state. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's also think about the file systems that we have been using traditionally, right? Your uh, laptop, your uh, computer, they all have a file system where you could, uh, you know, just save your files in terms of uh, text files or image files or Word documents and so on and so forth, right? So a file system can also be used to store data. However, th there's a huge difference between um, uh, a file system and a database system. Uh, the database system is specifically designed to store huge amounts of data and then query it, right? Whereas the file system is pretty much flat and uh, it is it is not as efficient and as optimized as uh, a database system is and there are a whole lot of uh, benefits of using a database system. So what are those benefits or what are some of these features of a database system? 
uh, is something that uh, let's you know we're going to look at right now. Uh, I've just highlighted. Uh, if you look at the screen, I've uh, just highlighted some of the uh, benefits here. Uh, first, the first benefit that you see is called uh, no redundancy. When I say no redundancy, what it means is a database system is carefully designed to ensure minimum storage requirements. You know, so let's say you have a, a, a database uh, field or a business field called name. You know, a customer name or a product name. Now that customer name and product name could be used at multiple different places um, in the system, but that doesn't mean that you have to sh you have to store the the complete uh, username you know at all the places, right? You could create a specific storage for those names, assign an ID to it, and then use that ID uh, in all the other places where you need to reference uh, or refer to that uh, that product name. Now that ID would take less storage, uh, less storage space. Then you know so, uh, the whole product name, which could be like hundreds of characters in, in length. So that's one of the things. Now the second thing is uh, uh, abstraction. So abstraction of details. What this actually means is that the end user, who is actually going to be using your system, he doesn't really need to bother about the nitty gritties of how the data is stored in your database. He doesn't care about how you are partitioning the data, how you are indexing it. As an end user, all he cares about is if he asks the right questions with the in, the in the specified format, he should be getting the right results. So that's uh, you know abstraction of details uh, from the end users. Now the third um, benefit is suitable for complex systems. You know, uh, with the database system uh, well designed, you can really implement it um, for extremely large and complex uh, you know business uh, corporations, um, and then huge uh, huge amounts of data can be stored. And uh, you can fetch the results also in a very finite amount of time without really um, uh, incurring huge uh, CPU costs. So that's um, one of the uh, you know um, significant benefits of a database system. Uh, in fact, uh, a database system is uh, also used uh, for better manageability of, of your data. Uh, let's say you want to uh, cut out certain portions of your data chunks. It's easier to do it in a database system rather than uh, doing it in a uh, file-based system. Uh, the next one is a query in simple and understandable language or syntax, right? So when I say um, simple and understandable uh, language, it's pretty much uh, like your natural language. Um, of course, there are rules on what you can type in or what you can feed or uh, what you cannot feed in and all. It, it sounds like, uh, let's say, select product name from product table, right? So this is... Uh, English pretty much for all of us and uh, that's how the SQL or the structured query language is designed uh, You don't have to write complex and cryptic code to get the data uh, Whereas if it was uh, a file system and you have to extract let's say uh, Only those rows that match certain uh, uh, in a Pattern in a name you'll have to write a whole lot of uh, cryptic code to get the data with the database system You have to write a, a very simple SQL query which sounds like English and it's also very easy to remember and also write back. Um, however, uh, with all these benefits, uh, there's also a price to pay, which is uh, the, you know, the expense of you know, creating, designing and, and maintaining a database system. It's significantly higher than a file-based system. But of course, you know, the benefits outweigh the, the, uh, you know, the, the costs of it. So large corporations and even Small corporations or corporations also prefer a database system. Um, the last one that I wanted to highlight here is the access control. Um, a file-based system uh, also has a certain level of access control. Uh, where, for, for example, a file can be designed for read-only or read and write both. However, uh, with the database system, you can also implement a finer or granular uh, level of uh, access control. So, for example, if I am storing customer information, I can restrict certain users uh, from, you know, updating or modifying certain rows only in that table. So, if I have 10 rows in the table, I can make sure that a, a user is able to update only a certain number of rows, but not all the other rows. So, that kind of uh, granularity in terms of security is also uh, possible in database systems. So, that's, uh, you know, uh, pretty much... Uh, uh, an introduction to a database system and what are the benefits and this makes more sense uh, to a business user 
whether you are uh, a business head in a large corporation or running uh, or running your own uh, business you know uh, small business uh, whatever right uh, how you store your data and how you manage it and how you use it for your day to day day to day operations and also for your strategic decisions uh, matters a lot and this course is also going to you know expose you uh, to all those uh, possibilities of you know uh, picking up and uh, you know uh, going ahead with the database system now here at the bottom i have given um, certain uh, you know uh, examples of database systems that are available in the market and that is pretty popular okay the first one of course that i have highlighted here is my sql which is what we are going to use uh, in this tutorial as our uh, hands on tool and uh, just so you know uh, my sql is also absolutely free this is absolutely free uh, there's no uh, cost involved in it um, the second one i have uh, given up uh, given uh, here is uh, uh, ms sql server ms sql server so this is basically by microsoft uh, you know corporation and they have a SQL Server uh, um, uh, database that is also very popular in the industry. Then, of course, you have uh, Oracle. Oracle is a giant, and uh, they have uh, you know a lot of different products in the market. But uh, Oracle is preferable is, is generally chosen by uh, large corporations with huge amounts of data. Then we also have Postgres, uh, which is another uh, you know great uh, database system. Then Microsoft also ships. MS Access uh, with uh, its MS Office, you know, uh, package, right? Now this is used by a lot of different people, um, you know, across the industry, including uh, people in uh, huge large corporations where they have uh, bigger databases, you know, such as uh, Oracle or even DB2 and all. A lot of business analysts and business users have their own copy of MS Access. You know, they they define, they, they actually create their own data. Um, uh, they they create the uh, data from Excel sheets and you know even manual entry or uh, importing from files from other extracts and all. But they maintain and they, they actually uh, maintain a copy of uh, a database, a subset of uh, the universe, right, in their uh, on their desktop or the, on their machines and do their own reporting and analysis and all. So that's why MS or Microsoft Access is very very popular among business analysts. Um, now the last one I wanted to mention is uh, IBM. Uh, DB2. So IBM DB2 is also another uh, popular uh, uh, database uh, given by uh, IBM. So this was uh, the basic uh, introduction to what a database system is and what are the different products available in the market. And if you are an individual uh, user or individual buyer, uh, small business owner, then what are your choices uh, for uh, you know um, picking a, a database? So obviously the number one choice that I'm going to highlight is uh, uh, Microsoft, sorry, uh, MySQL. Um, hold on, uh, let me just, um, yeah. So MySQL is one thing that I'm going to highlight for you uh, if you're an individual. Uh, and the second one that I'm going to highlight is also MS Access, Microsoft Access. Um, that.